Well, hey, this is Prakash Vanu with Mac Automation Tips. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about a classic application called Hazel. And this is an application in which you don't have to do any triggering or any shortcuts in order for it to automate things on your Mac. Let me show you how it works. So basically, Hazel is based upon rules that you set up that impact files and folders on your Mac, right? And if you never have used this, it might be a little bit challenging, but once you get the hang of it, you can do some amazing stuff with these rules and it helps you to keep your uh, Mac very organized. So let me give you an example. In my uh, downloads folder, you know, you download a lot of stuff all the time and the downloads folder can get very full. So you have to go in and you kind of clean, at least I do, I have to go in and clean it up and all that. But I want Hazel to kind of keep it organized for me. So what, if a file that's been in this folder for more than three days, it, get moved, it gets moved to this temporary folder. And then later on, when files in the temporary folder that have been there more than, I think, uh, I think, I think a month or so, those get moved to the trash. So basically, I'm just kind of cycling out stuff. But in three days, usually I will, if I don't want it to go to this folder, I will move those, those files to somewhere where I really want them to be. But otherwise, if they just sit there for more than three days, that means I probably don't need to, to file them away in a particular file. I just need to get them cleaned up in my downloads folder there. I need to keep it clean. So... Here's how the rule is set up. You have the conditions have to, to be that, that the date added is more than three days. So not the last three days, but if it's more than three days, it's going to be moved to the temporary folder. We also have the folder's full name is temp folder, and we want that is not temp folder because we don't want it to be moved anywhere. We want it to remain there. We don't want Hazel to do anything with it. Now, to check our rules, basically all we have to do is click on here, and click right here and then do this, right? Now you see that the rule does not match here because that particular file has not been in there more than three days yet, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm gonna change it to minutes and I'm gonna change it to zero right here. Then I'm gonna save it. Now it's going to, uh, it, it may take a little bit for it to, to, to do it because I just I just changed the rules. So it, it's going to take a little bit for it to do it. But So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of run it manually. Let me see here. And so let's say run rules now. Okay, let's see if it'll work in there. There you go. So you see that it got moved to that. Now, I don't have to go in and run rules now. Basically, if you have the rules set up, Hazel will look through all its rules that you have set up and see if there are any matches and it will do it automatically. You see how nice that is? And so basically I, I can do the same thing for my desktop here. You know, desktop cleanup. Any, now here I say any file, all right, date is not in the last 20 minutes, okay? Because basically when I get files on my desktop, you know, it's usually I'm just, I'm working with them and I'm, you know, I'm not really always saving them in any particular place. So I have them moved to a junk folder. Now, suppose I want those files again. I can go, I can go and I can see the next day. I was like, oh, I forgot, I forgot I had that. I know I did have that file on my desktop. Let me go to my junk folder and find it. But I don't have to go to my junk folder that much. But anyway, if it is, you know, more than 20 minutes, then it just gets moved to this folder. And that keeps my desktop clutterless, you know, it keeps it really clean. Another one that I need is when I add any file that is a uh, image file, right? And it's greater than 250 uh, kilobytes KB, right? I need it to be set the color red because that means that it's too large for me to use when I'm doing uh, web design work. So it's, it's important to, that, you know, that it that identifies it for me automatically. And then when it's under 170 KB, then it changes it to green. So that's very important. So you can do all kinds of rules here um, to, to um, uh, you know, basically based on what you need and what you want to have happen automatic without you going through all the steps. Same thing, another one here is that if I, um, you know, export a, um, a, a iPhone file, I mean, an iPhone image that has this extension to it right here, right? 
it goes to uh, goes to my desktop. I needed to run a workflow that converts it to uh, JPEG. So it automatically does that. And I think that's an automation um, workflow that I set up. And it just automatically runs it in the background for me, right? So, and then uh, let's see what else we got in download. Um, Okay, here's a count. Here's a one. Here's a, if if I uh, download a calendar uh, date uh, from the from the internet, and the extension is ICS, and the date is not, is is uh, not in the last 15 minutes, then it gets moved to the trash because. You know that's important. Now it gives it keeps it keeps it clean, right? Now there are some files I don't want to be moved to the trash, and that's the reason why I set up different rules uh, for that. Uh, same thing, recent PDFs here, and there's rules for this one. All right, and this is very, this is kind of complicated. A little bit, a lot of different things to go in here, and it gets moved uh, to the recent PDFs. And the reason why I want is for the recent PDFs because mainly, usually, I, I watch, I look at PDFs or read PDFs on my uh, my iPad. So I rarely read PDFs on my uh, on my on my desktop here, so on my computer. So anyway. Oh, let's go to the to the jump to the uh, junk folder as well. So remember, I talked about that junk folder. So here we have any files that are more than twenty days, right? They get moved to the trash, right? And that keeps it again, you know, just clean things up for me, and I don't have to worry about it. So this is just a really good um, application. I've been using it for almost like. 10 years because it is so helpful and all you have to do basically to get it set up is that you just want to add like here uh, you want if you want to find a folder for it to act on so say if you want to go into uh, I don't know let me see uh, oh no! Because they doc say I want to add documents folder again I can just add that well I've already added documents folder let's go to uh Divi resources or something like that, right? So, so basically, what you're doing is you want to set up rules for anything that happens in Divi resources. So you have the folder there. Then what you need to do is go in and add a rule, and you go in and figure out well what do you need to happen. So you know, is, is it based upon the name? Is it based upon date added? Is it based upon the the kind of uh, file that is? Is it based upon a tag? Uh, size, comment, it's all kinds of things. Say you download something, uh, and you want to make sure that if, if it's downloaded from a particular website, um, you choose this one. So all you can say is any file, any file that goes into Divi resources, I want something to happen to it, right? And then, so here's the things that you can happen to it. You want to say you can copy the file, rename it to a certain thing right here, and it, you know, say you, you want to have it renamed. Uh, another one is that you might want to have a, a tag added to it. You want tags removed. Uh, maybe once once a file is added to added to the Divi resources folder, you want to you want the folder to automatically open so that you can do whatever you want, right? So you know that's that's another one. Um, you know you can make it an alias. Uh, you can run a, a, a shortcut or run an Apple script on that. Uh, you can run an automated Apple uh, workflow. Um, you can run you can run rules on the folder contents, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do in here with this, and uh, you just have to spend some time learning how to um, how to how to how rules work and then if you go to the um, Hazel website they um, have some documentation for going into more details about how these conditions and how these um, rules work and what and what the actions are going to be but it's really one of the applications that I've been using for a long long time and if you haven't tried this or you don't know anything about it definitely i'm pretty sure they have a trial um uh you know free trial that you can use and, and what's really great about this application is it is not subscription based so you pay for it one time and it's yours and you can use it on your mac so if you like this video let me know and if you have any questions about how to use hazel uh you know definitely ask them in the, in the comment section if you have never used hazel let me know too because i want to kind of find 
find out what, what, my, what are my, you know, subscribers, you know, what kind of applications are you using? So let me know that in the comment section as well. What Mac, what Mac automation applications are you using and what do you like and don't like? So anyway, thanks a lot for stopping by. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, definitely subscribe. Really appreciate it. Take care.